Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will learn about the PSRR or the power supply rejection ratio of the OPAM. So it is one of the specifications that you will find in the data sheets of the OPAM. So typically in the data sheets, it is mentioned as the power supply rejection ratio, but in some data sheets, it is also mentioned as the supply voltage rejection ratio. So in this video, let us understand what does it mean and what is the importance of this specification. So in general terms, this PSRR specifies that if there is any change in the supply voltage, then how it will affect the output of the OPAM. Now ideally for OPAM, if there is any change in the supply voltage, then it should not affect the output of the OPAM. But actually, with the change in the supply voltage, the output voltage of the OPAM will also change by a small margin. And this is specifically important when the input signal level is very small. Typically, when the input is few millivolts or hundreds of microvolt, then this specification is very much important. So this PSRR is specified in terms of the input offset voltage. That means with the change in the supply voltage, how the input offset voltage of the OPAM will change. And typically, the unit of this PSRR is microvolt per volt. So for example, for some OPAM, if the PSRR is equal to 10 microvolt per volt, it means that when the supply voltage will change by a 1 volt, then the input offset voltage of that OPAM will change by a 10 microvolt. And effectively, that change in the input offset voltage will affect the output of the OPAM. So for dual supply OPAMs, typically it is assumed that the change in the supply voltage is symmetrical. But if the change in the supply voltage is not symmetrical, then it will lead to the common mode error. But here we will assume that the change in the supply voltage is equal to symmetrical. That means here we are assuming that both positive and the negative supply voltages are changing by the same amount in the opposite direction. For example, if the supply voltage of the OPAM is equal to plus minus 15 volt and if it is changes to 14.5 volt and minus 14.5 volt, then it means that the change in the supply voltage of the OPAM is equal to 1 volt. And with that change in the supply voltage, there will also be a change in the input offset voltage of the OPAM. So in the decibel, this PSRR is defined as minus 20 log of this delta VIO divided by the delta VS where this delta VIO is the change in the input offset voltage while the delta Vs is the change in the supply voltage. So I will come back to this equation later on. But first let us understand that why this PSRR is defined in terms of the input offset voltage. So earlier we have already discussed about the input offset voltage. And as we have discussed internally, the first stage of the OPAM consists of the differential amplifier. Now if both transistors in the differential pair are identical and if both resistors are also equal then in that case when we apply the same voltage to the both input terminals then the difference between the two input terminals should be equal to zero. But actually if you see then there will be some mismatch between the two transistors as well as the resistors. And because of that even if both the input terminals are connected to the same input then also we will get some difference between the two input terminals. So the difference between these two input terminals is known as the input offset voltage. So naturally, this input offset voltage is the bias dependent. That means as the supply voltage of the OPAM changes, then the biasing of the two transistors will also change. And because of that, the input offset voltage of the OPAM will also change. So within the OPAM, the different amplifier stages will amplify this input offset voltage. And when the OPAM is used in the open loop configuration, then this input offset voltage will get multiplied by the open loop gain of the OPAM. And since the open loop gain of the OPAM is very high, so depending on the polarity of this input offset voltage, we will get some positive or the negative voltage at the output of the OPAM. And if the input offset voltage is very high, then in that case, the output of the OPAM will also get saturated. But if we use the OPAM in the closed loop configuration, then this input offset voltage will get multiplied by the noise gain of the OPAM. That means whether the OPAM is used in the inverting or the non-inverting configuration, its output voltage will be equal to 1 plus this RF divided by R1 times input offset voltage. That means depending on the gain of the OPAM, we will get some output because of this input offset voltage. So as I said earlier, as the supply voltage changes, then the biasing voltage of the both transistors will also change. And because of that, 
the input offset voltage of the op amp will also change and that change in the input offset voltage will change the output of the op amp so in this way effectively the change in the supply voltage will change the output of the op amp so for ideal op amp this change in the input offset voltage should be equal to zero or ideally this psrr should be equal to zero but for the actual op amps the output does change with the change in the supply voltage so preferably this change should be as low as possible that means one should select the op amp which has the lower value of the psrr and when the psrr is specified in the decibel then the higher value of the psrr is more preferable for example if the op amp has the psrr of 100 db it means that this 100 is equal to minus 20 log of this delta vio divided by delta vs or we can say that this log of this delta vio divided by delta vs is equal to minus 5 so we can say that this delta vio divided by delta vs is equal to 10 to the power minus 5 or that is equal to 10 microvolt per volt on the other end if the psrr value is equal to 80 db in that case this 80 is equal to minus 20 log of this delta vio divided by delta vs or in that case this delta vio divided by delta vs is equal to 10 to the power minus 4 that is equal to this 100 microvolt per volt that means in the decibel as the value of the psrr reduces it means that with the change in the supply voltage there will be a more change in the input offset voltage so in the decibel the op amp with the higher value of the psrr is preferable moreover this psrr value will also reduce with the frequency that means while selecting the op amp we should also consider the psrr derating that means if we have a ripple let's say of 100 hertz on top of the supply voltage then that ripple will not be rejected by the op amp as effectively as the dc voltage and because of that some fraction of that ripple will also appear at the output of the op amp for example if we use poorly regulated dc voltage source with the op amp then it will have the substantial ripple on top of the dc voltage or if we are using the smps based supply voltage for biasing the op amp then it will have the switching noise of kilohertz frequency and because of the psrr d rating it will also appear at the output because as you can see from the graph the op amp will not be able to reject that high frequency noise effectively so this ripple or the switching noise will be more prominent at the output of the op amp when the input signal which we are amplifying is of very low value like a 1 millivolt or the 100 microvolt so let us take one example and let us put some numbers so that it will get clear to you so let's say a one op amp is biased at the plus minus 12 volt but because of the poor regulation there is a plus minus 100 millivolt of ripple on top of it so we can say that the total change in the supply voltage is equal to 0.2 volt that is equal to 200 millivolt and for that op amp let's say this is the psrr curve so here we are assuming that the frequency of the ripple is equal to 100 hertz and as you can see from the graph at 100 hertz the value of the psrr is equal to 80 db so first of all let us convert it into the microvolt per volt so as per this equation this 80 db corresponds to 100 microvolt per volt that means at the 100 hertz the value of the psrr is equal to 100 microvolt per volt and here the change in the supply voltage is equal to 200 millivolt so because of that if we see the change in the input offset voltage then that will be equal to this 0.2 times 100 microvolt or that is equal to 20 microvolt so depending on the op amp configuration this change in the input offset voltage will get multiplied by the op amp gain so here let's assume that the op amp is used in the closed loop configuration and the closed loop gain of the op amp is equal to 10 that means here the total change in the output that we will observe is equal to 20 microvolt times 10 that is equal to 200 microvolt that means if there is a ripple of plus minus 100 millivolt on top of the supply voltage then because of that 
we will observe the change of 200 microvolt at the output of the op amp and whenever we connect the input to the op amp then in that case this change will appear on top of the output signal for example if the input to the op amp is equal to 0.5 volt 5 hertz sinusoidal signal then in that case at the output we will get the 10 millivolt peak to peak signal and on top of this output signal there will be a ripple of 200 microvolt and as you have discussed since the psr degrades with the frequency so as the frequency of the ripple or the frequency of the switching noise increases then the ripple at the output will be more prominent so particularly when we are dealing with the very low signal levels then it is always advisable to use the regulated power supply with the low ripple value and we should select the op amp which has the very high decibel value of the psrr and during the selection we should also consider the derating of the psrr with the frequency moreover to avoid any high frequency noise in the output the proper value of the decoupling capacitor should always be used with the op amp so this decoupling capacitors provides the low impedance part to the high frequency noise and in a way it reduces the effect of the high frequency noise at the output of the op amp so that is all regarding the psrr of the op amp so if you have any question or suggestions then do let me know here in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos